Taiwan says China can paralyze its defenses. The Quad drills to combat China. And planting the seeds of socialism. That and more on this week's China News Headlines. John Uncensored. I'm Chris Chappell. Bad news for anyone who doesn't want Taiwan to fall to communist China. Taiwan's defense ministry says China can paralyze its defenses, not with brute force, but with electronic warfare. A new report from Taiwan's defense ministry says China can combine with its internet army to launch wired and wireless attacks against the global internet which would initially paralyze our air defenses, command of the sea, and counterattack system abilities, presenting a huge threat to us. Wait, China can attack the global internet? What does that mean for China Uncensored? What does that mean for cat videos? Taiwan's defense ministry also warns that China's knockoff GPS satellite system, called Beidou, can monitor military activity around Taiwan. The good news is the report says China still lacks the ability to mount a large-scale invasion. But Chinese spies in Taiwan could launch a decapitation strike to destroy political and economic infrastructure. It's like the Red Hot Chili Peppers tried to warn us. Psychic spies from China try to steal our mind's elation. But here's something to be elated about. For the first time ever, more than half of America favors defending Taiwan from Chinese invasion. That's according to a poll by the Chicago Council on Global Affairs. Not only that, majorities favor U.S. recognition of Taiwan as an independent country, supporting its inclusion in international organizations, and signing a U.S.-Taiwan free trade agreement. Perhaps more important than public opinion is what America's leaders actually do. The Biden administration seems to be continuing policies that stand up for China. Last week, China held assault drills near Taiwan. So this week, the U.S. responded by sending its own warship through the Taiwan Strait. You know, let China's Beidou satellites have something to look at. But tensions are flaring in the South China Sea. China has been pushing military activity in the region over the past year, especially against Taiwan. But this week, marks a major escalation, one that could change the balance of power globally. I'll tell you more after this commercial break. Welcome back. The Chinese Communist Party lays claim to pretty much the entire South China Sea. They've built artificial islands there and militarized them. By 2018, China had entrenched itself so much that short of war with the U.S., China had total control. That's a big deal. Not just because of the obvious military ramifications of it, but $5 trillion of international shipping goes through these waters. That gives the Chinese Communist Party a potential chokehold on the global economy. And now, they're beginning to put that into effect. China has begun demanding certain types of foreign ships report to it before entering its territorial waters. That's a requirement of the new Maritime Traffic Safety Law went into effect Wednesday. The Maritime Traffic Safety Law is not some international agreement. It's something China passed in April. And now it expects the rest of the world to comply and recognize its insane claim that all of this water belongs to China. Now, the law doesn't say what happens when a foreign vessel refuses to comply, which is why the U.S. Navy's freedom of navigation operations are so important. It's a way of saying, these are still international waters. The Communist Party has no jurisdiction. And it's no coincidence that this week saw a quad military exercise called Malabar 2021. These are joint military drills between the U.S., India, Australia, and Japan. The quad is an alliance specifically formed to counter an increasingly aggressive Chinese Communist Party. And this week, President Joe Biden made a speech where he talked about the threat of China. We're engaged in a serious competition with China. We're dealing with the challenges on multiple fronts with Russia. 
We're confronted with cyber attacks and nuclear proliferation. We have to shore up America's competitive to meet these new challenges in the competition for the 21st century. And what better way to shore up America's competitiveness than by getting out of Afghanistan? Yes, Biden is using competition with China as a justification for his botched withdrawal from Afghanistan. And there's nothing China or Russia would rather have, would want more in this competition in the United States to be bogged down another decade in Afghanistan. President Biden's right. America's two decades long focus on Afghanistan has distracted the military from much more serious threats, especially the Chinese Communist Party. On the other hand, the Communist Party is pretty happy about how the U.S. pulled out of Afghanistan, with its tail between its legs. China is one of the few countries with an active embassy still in Afghanistan, and China seems pretty willing to work with the Taliban now that the U.S. is gone. China has also been rapidly building up its nuclear weapons arsenal. Satellite images from August show China is building 110 new nuclear missile silos in Xinjiang. A few weeks before, 120 other new missile silos were discovered. Which is why, according to a senior U.S. military official, China will soon surpass Russia as a nuclear threat. This really is Cold War II. The U.S. official said there's going to be a point, a crossover point, where the number of threats presented by China will exceed the number of threats that currently Russia presents. There will be a crossover point, we believe, in the next few years. So, something to look forward to. The U.S. Treasury Secretary is saying the Chinese acquisition of a semiconductor firm is a security risk. No, duh. The company is called Magnet Chip Semiconductor, and a Chinese private equity firm called Wise Road Capital is trying to buy it. But now, that may not happen. It looks like the Committee on Foreign Investment in the United States, or CFIUS, may block the deal. CFIUS looks at foreign deals for U.S. national security concerns. Magnachip is a South Korean company, but CFIUS can still block Wise Road from buying it because Magnachip is traded on the New York Stock Exchange under a company registered in Delaware. And Magnachip was technically going to be bought by a subsidiary of Wise Road, also registered in Delaware. Delaware. A great place to do business. More after the break. Welcome back. And it's back to school time. While kids in the U.S. are worrying about masking up, social distancing, and vaccinations, students in China are getting a dose of the best medicine of all. Xi Jinping thought on socialism with Chinese characteristics for a new era. According to a Chinese government notice, primary school teachers must plant the seeds of loving the party, the country, and socialism in young hearts. Does anyone know the long-term side effects of those seeds? Actually, we do. China is reporting zero COVID cases after an outbreak of the Delta variant resulted in millions of people put into lockdown. How do they get it down to zero cases so quickly? It must be all those seeds of socialism. But China's economy took a hit from the lockdowns over Delta. It made ongoing supply chain issues even worse. If only some of those seeds of socialism could be injected into China's economy. What's that, Shelley? Oh, I guess they are. Wealth redistribution will solve China's problems. President Biden's climate envoy, John Kerry, is in China this week, trying to get the Communist Party to, you know, maybe cut back on that coal consumption just a teensy bit. No? Okay, fine, whatever. That's what I call shoring up America's competitiveness. Meanwhile, China's foreign minister, Wang Yi, warned Mr. Kerry that antagonism from the United States on other fronts could hobble climate cooperation. Sounds like those climate talks are going great. Speaking of people with no clue about China, Pope Francis. The Pope is defending his deal with China because dialogue. He said, an uneasy dialogue is better than no dialogue at all. Well, it's not exactly an uneasy dialogue. It's more like empty, meaningless dialogue that results in a one-sided deal that favors an atheist totalitarian state. 
But sure, let the Communist Party appoint Catholic bishops in China. I think this is the same kind of dialogue the U.S. has with China over climate change. Isn't that right, Mr. Kerry? And in a sign of just how well things are going between the U.S. and China, China has shut down the American Chamber of Commerce in the city of Chengdu. It was supposed to support trade between the U.S. and southwestern China. No official reason was given for the closure, but hey, I'm glad it got shut down. Let's get this economic decoupling started. And now it's time for me to answer a question from a member of the China Uncensored 50 Cent Army, a fan who supports the show on the crowdfunding website Patreon or on the subscription platform Locals. This one comes from Locals. That Jason down the road says, I think a live stream podcast where people can donate and ask questions would be really cool, even if it's just once a month. So yes, as you may know, we are now on Locals. It's a censorship-free platform that lets fans like you support your favorite shows. It's like Patreon, only no censorship. We haven't had issues with Patreon so far, but it's nice to be on another platform that is anti-censorship. You can support us either on Patreon or Locals, and there are different perks on each. One of the things we'll be doing in the near future on Locals is a private live stream for paying subscribers, where we can talk directly to you, answer your questions, and just hang out and get to know you. On the other hand, one of the perks on Patreon is a monthly Google Hangout chat with just me. So really, however you want to support us, just know it's a big help. We could not continue to make this show and expose the Chinese Communist Party without your support. So if you're interested, head over to patreon.com slash chinauncensored or chinauncensored.locals.com to learn more. So, that Jason down the road, thanks for your support. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. See you next time.